right, so thanks for spending a bit of time with me here on Mother's Day. Um, it's a beautiful sunny day despite all the snow we got yesterday here in Vermont. And I've got a box. Kind of a big box. It's so big I can almost hide behind this box. Uh, I don't know exactly what is in it, although I will give you a hint. There's some hanging on the wall behind me. <laughs> yeah, I know. That was, that was tough, right? That was tough to figure out. So we're going to open this up. I don't know exactly what is in here for rolling pins. And um, I'm going to have my assistant grab my mineral oil and paper towels because I want to talk to you about what you do with your rolling pins when you first get them because I want okay. you to take mm -hmm. care of them correctly. But we'll get to that in a second. We'll, we'll open it up. So I kind of gave some of it away. And then I have something else to share with you all. Um, but it's down here, and that will be at the end. So depending on what is in this box, uh, we might make some stuff. Like we might make some pots or plates or dishes or something. I don't know. So hi, everyone. Happy Mother's Day to all the moms out there. Happy Mother's Day to my mom, my aunt, my best friend, Missy, to Paula, all of my Clay Share moms, everybody who is in my life. Happy Mother's Day. Let's open this up. So it's from Sharon Hoppy. Sharon, thank you for the thing you sent me. <laughs> and we're going to find out together what's happening in the box. It's always exciting to do an unboxing. Um, do we want to switch to the overhead? Yes, so we're going to switch to the overhead view so you all can see this. Except everybody on Instagram, I'm sorry folks. It's going to be the straight on view. But, and um, we're in picture. And we have picture in picture too. Because, you know. So this is a big box. This this would be a big rolling pin, wouldn't it? Would it be a giant rolling pin? I'm going to look in it just to see. Haha. <laughs> Packing material. I'm saving these. Everybody who's been asking about me having a sale. I don't have enough packing material to do a sale right now, but when I get enough, I could probably do like a sale of three pots right now. That's all I have for packing material. So as soon as I can get more packing material, um, we'll do something. All right, here it comes. Ready? Ooh, one. Oh, ready? Two. We work together. They are available from claysharemarket.com. These rolling pins are made in the USA, either designed by Sharon or designed by me. If it's designed by me, it'll have my name on it. If it's designed by Sharon, it'll say the texture shop. So let's open up these rolling pins and see what we got here. So when you get your rolling pins, these are made from food grade wood. You can use these in clay, you can use them in food, whatever you want to use them in. But I do suggest you treat them with a, something to treat the wood. Think of this as a raw piece of wood or your, your countertop, you know, your butcher block counter. You want to you wanna treat it nicely so it lasts. This is her, this is Sharon. So Sharon Hoppy Designs, it'll say if it's one of hers. And this is her Jetson design. This is one of her new ones. I'm pulling y'all in close so you can see. Um, make, there we go. So this is a fun, funky one. This would be great for tiles. And it's little squares, and each square has a fun, different little pattern in it. Look at that. We just got five new ones yesterday. On a weird side note, you love how they smell. No, it's not weird at all. Um, I huff them all the time. They smell great. <laughs> how did your package get to my house, April? How did that happen? So that's the Jetsons one. This one I got, well... The person I'm making something for is sitting right over there with this rolling pin. Uh, this one is one of Sharon's new designs. It's called Coco Pelli, and it's got little Coco Pellies and lizards, and looks like some elk in the sun, and a little hand, and some spirals, and turtles, and thunderbird, crocodile, so all kinds of oh, dream catcher, fish, 
all kinds of animal motifs and southwestern motifs um, and Native American symbols on here too. So this is a fabulous fun one. Hi Sharon, thank you for my rolling pins. So that's uh, the Coco Pelli and then this, I don't know what this one is. Let's see this. She said one was a surprise. Actually there's, there's a couple. So all of these are from claysharemarket.com. You can get all these designs. So this is one of Sharon's. This is her new flower one. Sharon, what is this flower one called? Because I, this is brand new and I don't remember the name, but it's kind of like these happy sunny flowers. Hey, you don't have to put my mic on, Kev. We didn't mic me up. Can everybody hear? <laughs> you joined late. Well, you don't, you don't, it doesn't matter. You're here now. Look, yeah, luckily, the mic is sensitive enough. To I know. It. Hello. Here I here I am, not mic'd. Goodness me, what kind of a organization am I running? Not mic'd. There we go. Whew, much better. All right. And so the last one. Yeah. So the last one right here. The lollipopkins. Oh, the lollipopkins. Oh, from Wizard of Oz. Oh, I love it. I love it. Because that's that's where it's from, right? One last one. So this one here is one that um, I'm not sure if we're gonna put this out. This is one of my designs. This is a brand new one. It's actually not available. This is my B rolling pin everybody was asking about. Um, it does have my name on it, Jessica Putnam Phillips, and there's my bees. So it's a hand-drawn honeycomb background with bees and cherry blossoms on it. And it's super cute and this one we haven't put out yet because we are still trying to decide <laughs> all right you want me to put these in clay yeah we want you to put them in clay all right we're gonna put them in clay but normally when you get your rolling pins you're gonna want to rub um, something to treat them I use mineral oil you just rub a layer of that in I use a paper towel or a soft cloth rub your mineral oil on the rolling pin before you use it let it sit overnight and then use it the next day but um, please 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 release it it could go up the bee um, there was reasons I didn't put it up but I might just do it I might just do it you love the bees and honeycombs we're gonna put it in clay because I don't even know what it looks like so I do happen to have over here some clay imagine that surprising I had pre-rolled out some clay Oop, let's go the other way sorry everyone oh hello because you want to see what's happening right I had pre-rolled some clay and we can go ahead and put some of these in it so you can see the patterns if you want I like the honeycomb one put it out all right all right I think we will let me roll it in clay and then we'll, we'll put it out I think that that'll happen and those of you who have been following along in my private group for premium members, you know that I have been struggling with my Silhouette Cameo machine and I finally got it to work. And I've been cutting everything out with it, making stencils. And I have a new stencil I just designed quickly this morning. Um, I'm gonna actually, I'm gonna actually show you it later. I'll show y'all later. I'm gonna, I, it is, just cut like the machine just stopped and I haven't even pulled it off the um, cutting mat yet so we're gonna see that put it up for sale <laughs> I, I think we will I'll take some photos of it and we'll put it up I mean it's silly it's silly for me to not the thing is is there's other pins that were similar and I didn't realize it until I looked but then I did more looking and I found out there are tons of things with similar patterns to what I did so it's silly for me not to put it out I feel butcher block oil is okay yes it is you can use that so I just rolled this slab out maybe 10 minutes ago right before I, I came on the broadcast right before I went live and what I like to do is I like to roll my texture in first and then let it stiffen up a little bit and use it and so you see how I'm smoothing this down onto my board you want to do that because when you roll the rolling pin in, it's kind of, the clay is kind of stuck on the board. When I roll it in, the clay shouldn't come up. 
You like the cheap Easter basket buckets for water? Me too. Yeah, I, I, I love them. Every year I buy them after Easter for like 50 cents a piece. Super cheap, right? You love the bees. Oh. Okay, all right. Well, if I get photos of it, I can put it up later today. You know, I didn't even put my apron on. What's happening? How can I make pottery without my apron? I better get on it. Hold on. What is this world coming to? Like, seriously. All right, apron time. How did I do that? I was just so excited to, to open the box. I didn't even have my apron out. How did I roll it out on my slab roller, Jonathan? But you could use a, you could go ahead and roll it out with a rolling pin. And I often show how to roll it that way for those out there who don't have access to a slab roller. You don't have to have a slab roller to make pottery. It's nice, it makes things go a little quicker, but you don't have to have one. All right, I'm aproned up now. That's what's going on, we're ready to go. Okay, um, I have a step stool back here so that I can roll and actually put pressure downward as I'm rolling because that's what you need to do to get a good impression. So let's do the bees. We're not even gonna mess around, we're just gonna do the bees. We're gonna do it. There it is, bees happening, bees knees. Ready? I don't know what this looks like, so excuse me if I get in the way of the camera because I'm trying to roll. <laughs> Woo! There's the bees. There it is. You see the bees? Come in close. Come on down. Check that out. Look at those bees. Pretty nice. Let's roll something else on the other side. Let's do the Jetsons pin. We're going to roll that on the other side. I've got some slabs here that I have already prepped up, so we can do this. All right, the Jetsons pin. Ooh, I'm excited for this one, too. Excuse the back of my head, everybody. <laughs> You're going to get the back of my head. There's, that is amazing. Sharon, you have outdone yourself. If you like the Jetsons or, or like funky patterns, this one right here is awesome. How thick do I roll out my slabs? This here is about three eighths of an inch thick. And then by the time you smooth it down and add your texture, it thins it down to about a quarter of an inch. And then again, they will shrink as they dry. So it will be even thinner. Look at these. Let me bring you in close again. Oh, look at how good these are. I love them. Very happy. So there's these two textures. I'm gonna bring it up close. So there's the Jetsons, and this is the bees. There's the bees, the bees knees. So there's that one. And wait, I got another board so we can roll Coco Pelli and the, the um, lollipop kins. So let's grab the other board. We'll roll these in, and then I'm gonna have to make some pots. Because what do you do with all this clay if you don't make pots with it, right? Oh, and we're going to do something with that stencil, but not today. We're going to use the stencil on Wednesday. On the live broadcast on Wednesday, we'll be using the stencil. But um, I was giving you a teaser today. So let's get this zoomed out. There we go. Coco Pelli. Um, I think I'll make the bee available after all. Yes. Yes, I will. Because here's the thing. You know what? People can buy whatever they want to buy. And there are so many different bee patterns out there. And you know what? I'm good. We'll put it out. And if you want the bees, you can get the bees. All right. So I have to flip this over because it has canvas texture on one side. So we're just going to and that's how I flip my clay. Do you see that? I just grabbed it with my hands here and just kind of flopped it. The clay is very, very pliable right now. Kevin's doing an unboxing of his own over there. What are you doing, Kevin? Hey, Dad. He's opening, he's opening something. Um, who was that from? Rich. Rich McNatt. Sir, are you watching? Are you watching? He's watching. 
Rich, Kevin's opening something from you. Did you know that he was going to do that? Because I didn't know. He's doing his own private unboxing. That's not being shown. Oh, I see. That's gorgeous. So Mr. Rich McNatt sent Kevin an unbelievably fabulous mug. Give that to me. <laughs> oh, wow. Look how beautiful this is, Rich. Rich, you made this? I'm impressed. You made this watching me make stuff? Like you made this because I taught you how to make stuff? You're good. You're really good. You have a great teacher. I love that. It's awesome. This is fabulous, Rich. Way to go. We got some Mako glaze on here. You want to share the glazes? I know. <laughs> you should share. Oh, I love it. Is I'm that? About, I'm about to have a fit. Kevin's having a private fit over there. He's just having his own little fit sitting down. You know, you here. This is gorgeous. So you're new to Clay and wondering how often I do these broadcasts. So I do them every Wednesday at 5 p.m. Eastern, and then I usually pop in Sunday noon to 2 afternoons to do a live broadcast just to check up on everybody and see how everyone's doing. And then I also release new classes, usually Fridays, but this week we had an update to our app and our website, so that meant I waited and put the new class out yesterday. That was the teapot class. All right, let's put Coco Pelli in Clay. That's a man-sized mug. You're right. No, it's a, it's a nice mug. Coco Pelli going in. All right, I'm rolling. And if you listen, you'll hear my chicks in the background peeping. Oh, that's nice. So I was in Sedona in January. Absolutely fell in love with Sedona. And this Coco Pelli so reminds me of my time there. And that's really what I wanted it for is because I want to make a mug or something with it that has these southwestern patterns on it, and then I can glaze it in this beautiful southwestern glaze. I should steal that mug from Kevin because he steals my mugs, right? And now we're gonna do the lollipopkin. Excuse my head again. Cute. This would be nice as a mug too, super cute. Look at that. I'll pull you all in a little closer. Look at how cute these are. So Coco Pelli, and the little lollipopkins. Now, if you roll your texture in and for some reason you're not happy with how it looks, you know, you can go ahead and just smooth it away and do it again. You're not locked in. You're not stuck with the way it rolled out. You can smooth it out, roll it again. Easy peasy. I bring out the bees now. You just place an order it's on its way to you. Oh no! And now you need the bees. You need the bees. So the bees roll out non-directional, meaning you can go as long as you want with the bees. So if you want to make a mug or something, just go, because there's, there's not a direction in it. And the Jetsons pattern is the same way. There's no direction for that. Some of the others are a little more directional, meaning you'll roll them out and you'll see your pattern and you'll see that it needs to go in one way or another, right? So they turned out so good. If I have to repeat the pattern, is there a secret to making them look good? So I look at it as quilting. If you have a rolling pin that the design ends and you have a definite edge on each side, what I will do is I will treat it as if I was sewing. And when you sew, you have a quilt and you'll have a seam. Just accentuate it somehow. Maybe switch your texture up, have a bigger open texture on one side and then a smaller closed texture on the other side. And that'll make it look, it'll be more um, asymmetrical, but it will look intentional. And that's what I do with it. Or I'll just do, if it's a big platter, down the center and then on each side. So I divide into thirds if I can do that. that I, I like the way that looks there. So let's, let's get the bees out. We'll do, we'll do a plate. Let's do a plate quickly. Uh, what are we going to do a plate with? Hmm, thinking. I'm thinking, I have some GR pottery forms right here. So we have the lollipop one, we have the Coco Pelli. I think I'm gonna do a B plate. I mean, could I make anything else? Probably not. <laughs> yeah, Sharon has been making a lot of gorgeous designs lately. You know, as you all know, I come out with maybe one design a month because I'm so busy with Clay Share 
and everything else I have going on, I just can't get um, a huge number of designs out. I just don't have the time. But Sharon, that's what she does, is she designs pins. And she has more designs, which is fabulous, because it kind of fills in the gaps when I can't. Sharon will have the bees ready to go in a few minutes. Woo! So Sharon's going to put them up, and we will be ready with bees happening. So let's see if I have enough clay to do a plate. I could do a small plate. So Sharon will have them loaded onto the site for me to release it. So Kevin so has to go we, in and turn it on. Right, after we finish the broadcast. Let's do a line of bees down this side, and then we'll, we'll make a plate, a bee plate. How do you find the forms? These forms, meaning the templates and the actual drape forms, are from grpotteryforms.com. And we have a sponsor offer, although they're doing a sale right now. So if you order from them with their sale, say, I'm a Clay Share member. Let them know at least where you heard about it and saw it. Because I want, you know, I want GR to know what our, our members are doing. So we're going to go ahead and just roll. So someone is asking, what do I do about the seam? Handmade pottery, baby. Let the seam be awesome and be there. So there we have a little, a little seam there. Now we're going to release the clay. I don't get caught up in things like seams. I don't get caught up in the texture being a little uneven in one area or another. I know some, some people will watch my um, little quick videos and, you know, all they want to do is pick the videos apart. And they can do that. But the fact is, I'm doing this to have fun, to share techniques and process. I'm not trying to be a perfectionist. So we're just going to cut this out. Make a bee, quickly make a bee plate. A bee line to a plate. <laughs> yeah, I know. That was bad, wasn't it? And then, and then we'll get the stencil that I made with my new... Well, I won't say new cam new cameo silhouette because it's a cameo two. It's a silhouette two. Um, they have the four out now, which I may have ordered <laughs> because it's on sale for half off um, through Silhouette America right now. So I might have ordered myself a new one because they can cut more materials and, and deeper and all that. All right, so on the B pin, You'll see I have this area where there is a band. Um, let me put it there. So you can see a band of texture here and a band of texture there. So I want that to be the tops and bottom of my plate. So I'm just going to line my rim template up so that they're spaced pretty evenly. And we'll go with that. So this is basically what I did on Wednesday's Live, right? We made plates. Estimated time of delivery. My dear, ask Sharon. They don't ship from me. They ship from Texas. And Sharon is pretty good at getting them out quickly. She cuts them to order, so they're not sitting there waiting to go. But um, usually it's, what is the usual, hon? Usually it's about 7 to 10 days. Okay, 7 to 10 days for a Made in the USA pin, you know. It can, and it if can you don't do clay... Yeah, it can vary a little bit um, depending on the way shipping's going right now with the pandemic. But. Well, I know with everybody um, on lockdown. So here's the thing. If you don't do clay, this bee pin would be amazing for cookies. Can you imagine how cute cookies would be with the bee pin? Uh-huh. And I have a plan. Some of you know. The bee pin, when I was designing it, I have a, a future class planned for the bee pin. And I'm not going to tell you what it is, but I think it, it's kind of easy to figure out. So there we have what will be our plate. And if you look at the way our, um, our plate is divided up, you know, we have a stripe here, a stripe here, and then we have a stripe over here. And I find asymmetry really intriguing in pottery. I really like the way it looks. So for me to have little things going on, that gives it more interest. And that, that's just me. Your GR forms are on the way, Barbara. Super exciting. So I'm going to use, this is the nine and a half. I think I want to use the eight. I do. I want to use the eight. So let me get my eight. That's the nine and a half. Got to look for it. Got to figure out where I put it. That's my eight. Okay. And here's the eight. I could have used the nine and a half, but it would have been a really small rim. And I want, 
big room. How's that look? That look pretty centered to you all. All right, I see some people commenting on Instagram. I'm trying to keep up with comments, uh, Matt, Sam, but you'll have to ask again because I must have missed it. So let's see how this is. This looks pretty centered. All right, we're gonna flip it over. And I have got a board right here. I'm just gonna put that on and flip the whole thing. You know I use B-Mix, but when you went online to look at your local pottery supply, they have a different couple different um, B-Mixes. So they might not be driven to that product. Right, so B-Mix 5 is what I use. It's the 401, I believe is the code, like WC401. Kev, you look on the box, it'll say right below B-Mix what the code is. There's actually a manufacturing code. WC401. WC401 is the exact B-Mix I use. That is a white B-Mix with no grog. So Laguna WC401 is the B-Mix I use. So that's how you get the exact thing I have, which it's just a nice light colored stoneware clay. And you can use any clay with this though. I, I think this, what was the name of the place for the forms? grpotteryforms.com. So, I think this B pin would look amazing in a dark clay with a cream or honey colored glaze, like breaking. I think it would be amazing, breaking over your texture. So I'm gonna do some dark clay. I don't get the dark clay out very much because, you know, I'm used to using the light clay. When I use the dark clay, then I have to clean everything a lot. B pin is ready for pictures and release. All right, everyone. So I'll take pictures um, of B pin after the broadcast and uh, we'll put it up so you guys can get the B pin. So there's the plate on. If you don't want to put a foot on this, you don't have to. You can leave it footless. Sounds funny. <laughs> or you can foot it. Footless or footed. Entirely up to you. Hello from Milwaukee. I've been to Milwaukee. I had a great time there. I was there for Inseca a few years ago. You guys have a gorgeous city and a thriving pottery community. That's really amazing. I didn't know until I went there um, how much, um, you know, pottery was happening in that area, but it is. They have WC-893-379, the 401. The 401 is what you want, April. So the first of the broadcast, if you missed the beginning, yes, it will be available as replay. And I treated, I didn't treat these, like I didn't physically do it. I didn't show you how to do it, but you just rub mineral oil or something like a butcher block oil to seal in your wood. Now what I will do is I will wipe this down and then I will seal it after, which I should have done first, but I got too excited and wanted to show you all. And again, this clay is a cone five stoneware clay. All right, now, now we're gonna put a foot on because you know me, I, I can't go without a foot. Oh my gosh, there's that Jetsons patterns looking at me and I'm like, oh, I need to do that too. But I will do that later. <laughs> I will, I will get to that after. We're gonna do the foot first. So this is gonna be two parts, see? There's one side there, and then I need to do another. Let me grab, I'm just gonna go here. Okay, and then I got some more here. And so we're gonna slip and score our feet, halves, and we'll join them. I know they're very, the chicks are now 10 days old, everyone. And they've gotten so big, they have, they're getting their feathers. They love people, oh my goodness. When they see a person, they just, they lose their mind. They, they just, they're so already social and I love that. Hey, hey from Louisiana, welcome in. Yes, so do you guys get crazy weather? where you are because I don't know about everybody else, but we had five inches of snow yesterday. And uh, thank goodness it's warmed up to 46. 
<laughs> today and it's melting, but we don't normally have snow in May. So those of you who think that we usually do, we don't. That's not normal for Vermont. Snow in April, yes. Snow in May, no. Usually by May, we're having flowers, we're having 60s, it's beautiful. Show the chicks. I will do, um, I'll do a chick broadcast probably tomorrow. And I usually do that on my private page, not on the clay share. So I just took these strips. Do you see how I cut them at an angle? And now I'm just smoothing out. But I just wanted to show you all how to make a plate quickly with the bees. We can't, oh, I can't pop it out right now because the clay is too wet. So we'll have to pop it out and I'll show you in the live broadcast on Wednesday the result. But I showed how to make plates like this in last week's broadcast. You can go check that out and watch the replay of that. And also I did a broadcast on Thursday showing how to flip them out as well. So that's, that's the plate, it's done. It's a done deal. And I will sign it with black underglaze in here and then carve my name. You made your first big bowl with a foot ring after watching a couple of the videos. Oh, April's very exciting. That's very exciting. Five inches of snow and you're at 95. I know, it's crazy crazy weather. Right. If you're going to order rolling pins, you want to go to the sets. So if you go to the clay share market and you see rolling pins, you have Sharon Hoppy's designs, my designs, and then sets. Go to sets because you save on shipping. If you order one, the shipping is one price. If you order two, the shipping is the same for both. Yeah, so it, uh, Does it go up a, a little? A single pin is 14 and So $14 to ship one pin, and two pins shipping, 19.95. 19. So it only goes up $5. And then three pins, 19.95. Four pins, 19.95. So if you buy four pins, your shipping is only $5 if a pin, you but you've got to do it as a set. set. You have to click on the sets, and people are trying to buy four pins without doing the set. So you have to click set and then add your patterns to the set. That's how it works. So we'll put the B pin up later and you can get that. But you can get shipping as low as $5 a pin if you order as a set. But you can't put them individually in the cart. You got to do a set. I'm loving that. I'm loving this B. What else can I make with it? I got nothing else set for, for making. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so um, this is the B plate. We will see how that turns out. Now I want to show you all something. I know the JR Pottery Forms make it so easy. It, it's, it is, it feels like cheating. I can show you a plate I made with a different pattern on Wednesday. I can grab that daisy pattern, which I made that Wednesday. It's going in the bisque kiln today. What did I tell you all about drying? How fast things could dry? Look at this. This plate right here. This is one I made Wednesday. You guys saw me make it. And this is the way I signed them. My name's carved in the bottom. What do you need to do to the pin to seal it? So all wood, when it comes to wood products, need to be sealed. So just use some mineral oil or butcher block oil, and that should be fine. So it's, it's completely ready to go. I, look, no warping, no wobbling, nothing. I made this Wednesday. Covered it lightly Wednesday, which was great for me. Thursday, guess who forgot to cover their plate? Me, I forgot to cover the plate. But you know what? Look at it. We don't have a single wobble. We have no warping. It looks fabulous and now it's ready. I didn't even weigh this down. I know, everybody's like, what? I didn't even weigh this down. This is exactly what I always caution against doing and I did it myself and it came out fine. But now it's ready for a bisque today. Made a plate Wednesday. I'm going to bisque it today on Sunday. That means it'll come out of the bisque kiln Tuesday. Theoretically, I could glaze it Tuesday, put it back in. It could come out Thursday. That's an eight-day turnaround. You can make a plate one day and have it ready eight days later. You shouldn't do that, but you could. <laughs> so you bought two sets of three, and your shipping was $19.95. Um, so you got your sets of three and nine, yes, it should have been 1995 for your set. Right. Exactly. 1995 each set. Yes. That's how it should be. Right. Because you bought a set of three, right? So if you'd bought a set of four, your shipping still would have been 1995. So that's, that would have been 
you know, the pins still cost the same, but you save on the shipping. So you did right, Kathleen. No, that's exactly how it's supposed to be. That was exactly what. So you have pieces you made a week ago that are not dry. Diana, I have pieces I made three weeks ago, a hand-built teapot that is still drying, and it's not going in the kiln till next time. Some things just take a long time. Plates like this. So this is what this plate, here's the raw, wet, just made it plate. Here's the bone dry, ready for bisque firing plate. And I do have some finished ones over there I showed last week. So there we go. How do they keep smaller ornaments from warping, weighing it down? So if you use a weight bag, you can weigh things down to keep things from warping. If you're making little ornaments, you can make little tiny weight bags. You can make small ones. You can make them any size you need. All right, you need to make weight bags, yes. You love the plates, Peggy, woohoo, I'm glad. So what material do I use that does not leave a mark on the pottery? Uh, like to roll it out, you can use um, slab mat. They make a, a sheet you can use and then you don't get the canvas texture when you first roll it out. I use canvas, so I get the canvas texture. You could also roll it out on a board and that will help. But if you're putting it through a slab roller, you'll need some sort of material. So the slab mats are what I'd recommend for that. What is the WC-401? Flynn, that is Laguna B-Mix 5 with no grog. That's what the 401 is. That's exactly. Um, so let's check, out, let's check out the thing I've been making with my cameo silhouette. What do I make my weight bags of? Uh, guess what, folks? Old long sleeve shirts. I cut the sleeves off and then I put a rubber band around one end, fill it with cat litter or sand or rice and put a rubber band around the other one end or tie it in a knot and that's a weight bag. You can also take the center part of a shirt as a square, pull your corners up, you know, fill it with your material, pull your corners up tie it off with a rubber band and there's a weight bag. No sew, easy peasy. Super fun to make too, because you feel good, you're recycling old shirts. So let's, let's check out this Tyvek craziness. So I didn't bring the little baby succulent cutouts I did, but I did bring, and it's down under my cabinet. I did bring this. This just came hot off the cutter. So those of you with die cutters out there, and quite a few of you know, I've had this die cutter for four years. Um, actually, I believe it was a Mother's Day present four years ago, wasn't it? Was it four or five now? Four or five. Four or five. The kids were little because they would actually hang out with us. <laughs> so our children were small then. Um, old socks do too, yes. Yeah. Uh, and I see uh, what size forms for the large and the small rim templates. Okay, GR Pottery Forms has a recommendation, but I have a different one. I recommend the eight and the 11 inch round forms for the rim templates. That's what I recommend. So this right here is the culmination of many, many days of frustration and finally having that aha moment where the light bulb goes off and you realize it's easier than you think to do. So this is with my Silhouette Cameo 2 die cutter machine. And as I mentioned, Silhouette sent me an email doing half off the, the new one, that's their four. And I was looking at the Cricut Maker, but the, the Cameo is so much more affordable than the Cricut. And it cuts, it'll cut wood. I looked into it, it'll cut wood, craft foam, fabric, um, Tyvek paper, which is just an old envelope right here. And I made a pattern, a repeating pattern in Procreate. I created my own repeating pattern brush and used that. And then I put it in the Silhouette Studio software. This is very delicate to get this to, to come off. And I use the tracing tool and you just trace it and you turn it into um, a file that your cutter can recognize. So you need to have a SVG, which is a scalable vector graph. don't want to tear my Tyvek. It's a little delicate. And so you very carefully, very carefully peel this off. And it takes a while to peel off. This took 25 minutes to cut. You love your silhouette. I didn't love it for a long, long time. It took me 
um, years to love it. <laughs> and then, so here's the thing. I was looking at getting the scan and cut from Brother. I was looking at a bunch of other die cutters out there. And the more I looked at it, the more I realized that the, the silhouette, I understand the software now. I actually was pretty close to getting it before I just got frustrated with it. And do you see the pattern we're getting? So you can see this is going to be a stencil that I'll be able to use in my pottery. And I'll put this Tyvek paper down, Tyvek paper down. It's basically an envelope for the post office, but don't tell them I said to get that. Don't go get those because I believe they might think you're like stealing if you go and take their envelopes to cut with. I'm going to buy Tyvek paper by the roll. I just wanted to get one cut to see how it would do. And so you have to be very gentle taking it off. And these negative bits, I, I, you could use them. I probably won't use them. But you have to very slowly peel this off. And I have to tell you, when I get a little more experience under my belt with my die cutter, I will do some classes for you all because I've had a ton of requests and it can be very daunting when you first start out and very frustrating. I know it was for me and I'm tech savvy and I use Illustrator and Procreate and I design all the time. Now, I'm really not an illustrator. I'm just an artist that uses Illustrator as a tool to, to get her designs so that I can make rolling pins or underglaze decals with. All right, so I don't think you all want to watch me unroll this whole thing. But you see where we're going? You see how that pattern's going to be? This actually, what you see is white, is the negative space. That's what the pattern actually will look like on clay. Here is the actual stencil part, though. That's this part here. And this will be the piece that I will lay on my clay. And I do have a class on using stencils on pottery. And this is exactly the kind of paper I used. So you can make your own stencils. It's pretty awesome. All right, let's see. I did order the new Silhouette Peggy. Yeah, I haven't gotten it yet. I ordered the Cameo 4. Um, and I, I'm just going to tell you all, they're doing a half off sale. I get no like commission or anything if anybody buys one. But if you want one, if you go to their website, they have Mother's Day bundles and it's 50% off the bundle and you and the code is mother's day all capital mother's day and that's from an email they sent me and i've shared that in the prime group for my premium members i shared that code there um, if you're looking at getting a cutter there there are so many different ones out there i think just do some research and decide which one you want but if you do decide you want to get the silhouette cameo 4 it's half off to the 12th so you got like two more days. If you were thinking about getting one, now might be the time. Uh, Cricut, their maker is, is, they have some bundles on sale, but even their bundles are $500. That's a little more than I could go. I'm trying to see if I'm caught up with the comments. So it's Silhouette America, Jessica. Go to silhouetteamerica.com. And it's a Mother's Day special. They sent me an email. And I don't think you have to link through the email, but the code is Mother's Day. Oh, this is going to be so good. All right, do you guys want me to keep peeling? Do you want me to keep going? <laughs> Saving up for a slab roller. I, I love my slab roller. It was next to my kiln and wheel. It's, I mean, I use my slab roller more than I use my wheel at this point in making. But... If you are a wheel thrower, you know, of course, that'll be different for you. But if you're a hand builder, a slab roller is like after a kiln, it's the next thing you should get. So I'm being very gentle and slow because I don't want to tear my Tyvek. Yeah, I know, Peggy. That's why. So I have the two, which I'm just barely starting to use. But it doesn't cut um, that thick and it doesn't cut the wood. And so I decided if I'm going to start using this a lot, I really want a machine that can do what I ask of it. 
And you know me, if I get into something, I'm gonna get into it. So there's gonna be a lot more stencils and patterns. And I was reading, and I can actually design these, these SVG patterns, and the templates could be things you could download. Um, I'm not sure how that would work, but it can happen. Getting close to the end, close, close, close. Almost there, we're just gonna keep going because I've already spent all this time with you. Ha, it's off. All right, so here's what it will look like on clay, right? If, pretend this is any color you want. And then this is the actual stencil. Um, we could give it a try. I could take a piece of clay and I could show you how I would use it. Why not? What else am I gonna do besides make pots? Let's do it. So I'll cut a chunk of clay So this is how you use a stencil. And there's multiple ways of doing it. Now, if you use vinyl, um, you could actually stick the vinyl on a bisque pot. I'm not gonna be using vinyl right now. I will get into cutting vinyl later. What did I do with my yellow rib? Did you see it? Did you see it? Who knows where I took it? All right, we're just gonna use the red one and smooth it out. <laughs> it's fine. I just want to smooth this side out. So when I use the stencils this way, I will use it on raw clay. Could, you could put it on a paper towel roller and make a texture roller. Well, not with this Tyvek, it's too thin, but if you cut out craft foam, yes. If you use craft foam, you could make your own rolling, texture rolling pin. You can make your own stamps. You can make your own vinyl stencils that you can then apply to a silk screen and make your own silk screens, which you could use for making your own underglaze decals. All right, smooth this out. And here we have our texture, well, our pattern right here. And what I do is I take my plain rolling pin and I just roll this in because I want it to seal. And you want to make sure you get all of this pressed into clay. Actually, where's my new pony roller I just got? You know where my little wooden roller went? Mm, I just got, oh, there it is. I just got this. I haven't even used it yet. Let's use the pony roller. So what I love about the little guy is it can really get in there. How does the negative space come off? You peel it off. <laughs> on this, I have to peel these each off one at a time. A little time consuming. You might have children that don't mind doing that sort of thing for you. If that's the case, give them that job <laughs> to peel that off. All right. So if we used vinyl, because vinyl's sticky, you could stick it on a, a bisque piece already fired. But because we're doing this before we even make it, we're treating it... Um, as like an underglaze decal. So let me grab some underglazes. What colors do I want? Turquoise, I've got my cart of colors. Let's see, I've got turquoise, I have got aqua. I've got a lot of colors. I have got a bright blue, medium blue, aqua. Um, you think three, maybe a, maybe a lighter. Maybe I could see if I find a chartreuse. Okay. So get your, look, did you all know this was gonna end up going this way? You never know where things are gonna go when I do a broadcast. Um, this, was, this was what I was gonna do Wednesday. We'll do it again. We'll do something else. We'll do something similar. <laughs> all right, I've just got some brushes here and we're gonna apply, you could do one color. I'm gonna do three, three or four. The Cameo Four is what I just ordered. Right, like an ombre, you got it. So this pattern I designed in Procreate, you can design a brush and make your own brushes, and then you can use those brushes to create repeating patterns. It, I use Pixabay, I, I use some other apps to help get that repeating pattern. And it's a little, it's, it's a little fiddly to get your pattern down, but once you get it, it's pretty cool. So I can make a brush 
that I can use, and if, if you're familiar with Procreate, it just basically is a tool that lets me put a repeating pattern wherever I want to. All right, let's, let's put some of this on. I, I'm just going to go stripes, and it will be an ombre. because we'll do multiple stripe colors. And the thing I like about using this Tyvek, if this was paper, I, it would be a one and done. I could use it once, and then I would have to get a new sheet every time. The Tyvek, you can carefully wash clean and reuse. So put your underglaze on rather liberally because you really want to have good color. And you could do black if you wanted to do like a black and white pattern. All right, so that's the aqua. Now we're going to go with turquoise. Right. Yes, you can do it at a newsprint, but then it's a one and done and you can't use it again. With the Tyvek paper or a vinyl, you can use it multiple times, which is really nice because it takes 20 minutes for your machine to cut this, this intricate pattern right here that I did. It took my machine 20 minutes. So I wouldn't want to do a bunch of them and throw them away. It would be a lot of time waiting for the machine to cut it out. Be a lot of wear on the blades too. It would be a lot of wear on the blades too, exactly. So that's why if you want to use these um, types of techniques, you want to Try to find a way to make them reusable. Now, I would use my vinyl and I would do a silk screen with it. You know, put on a silk screen and create your own underglaze transfers that you can then put those underglaze transfers on anything you make. So let's go with the darker blue. We're going to do three shades of blue. The, the paper can be wiped off. This paper can, yes, because this is Tyvek it's actually got plastic in it. So it's not the same as um, regular, regular paper. It's a different type of paper. It's, um, and you can buy it by the roll, you can buy it by the sheet. You could get an envelope from your post office to try one, but I wouldn't recommend getting all of your supplies from the post office. They'll get grumpy with you and then yeah. me. You can get a, a small roll of it from Home Depot or Lowe's, and it'll, and it'll yeah. be a, effectively a lifetime supply. I think I have a roll of it somewhere, honestly. Uh, we, I, I've got some left over from when I did the pour. Ah, see? I have some Tyvek paper. So I like three colors when I'm doing um, multiple color things. Three is, it's just nice. You have a little more interest and stuff. So this, this is done. It's on. So you have to let it set just long enough so that it's not shiny. If you peel up the, if you peel up the Tyvek right now, it'll run. So did I get the business edition of the software? Um, Kim, I did get it. I didn't know there was a repeat function in it. With the bundle, with the Cameo 4, it came with the, uh, with the one year or business edition, or maybe it's forever, it was $99, but I got it and I have it. So I didn't know there was a repeat function, but the cool thing about making a brush that can repeat and procreate is you can use it as a fill for shapes. So say I made a kitty cat face and I wanted just the silhouette of the kitty cat face, I could put this pattern in that silhouette. So then I would have a kitty cat shape that had this brush in it. So that would be a really cool thing um, to use that for. So let me speed the drying process up. <sighs> Yeah, in the bundle that I got, it came with the Cameo 4, it came with the Business Edition software, it came with 25 downloadable um, like images or something, but I won't probably use those, but it's nice. And then it came with their little um, mini stamp maker, which I think would be fun to play with. I wouldn't buy that by itself, but it came, came with the kit. So I was like, yeah, why not? And then I got extra extra mats and extra blades. So we're drying, drying, drying. So the company that's offering the sale is Silhouette America. And the code is Mother's Day. We're gonna sell them out for them. They don't even know, they don't know who I am. I don't, you know. <laughs> 
but they'll know they sold a whole bunch of these. Um, you could also roll a brayer across this if you wanted to, instead of just brushing with a brush. And as soon as we get the sheen gone and it's settled down, we can peel it up. Will I sell my SVGs? I might eventually sell them, right? It depends if there's, because I need to start doing more, more things, right? <laughs> <laughs> I need to have more things available. Uh, we'll see how I get at it. If I do, if I make designs that are good, yeah, I'll put them out there. We'll find a way so that you all can get them. You know, with my rolling pins with Sharon, um, that's really my design priorities is to, to do new rolling pins there. And then after that, I, I'll, I do underglaze decals with Sam Bao. You know, it's China Clay Art. I do underglaze decals for them. And then maybe the SVGs, and I did just have a little bit of a, of a conversation via text with Jeff from GR Pottery Forums about possibly designing rim templates, me designing rim templates for the oval and square forms, if y'all want those. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Diana used to work at the post office, so she knows this paper well. Yeah, I definitely don't recommend you go take their paper. I got one envelope. Oh, look what I just did. I smacked it. See? Goofing off. I got one envelope to test it to see how it would work. Look. Fix your mistakes. Don't, don't get carried away like I just did and smack your stuff. Jeez. Jeez, Jess. You can't let me do anything. Goes crazy. All right. Look at that. You can cut foam with it. Yes. You just ordered a Cricut two days ago. Yeah, so here's the thing. I think all the machines are pretty equal. It's just which one you want to use. For me, I went with the Cameo because the price was really good right now. Um, you know, I didn't want to pay 500 for a machine, but I would pay 279 with free shipping because that's what it ended up being. And that was basically my Mother's Day present to myself. All right, your decals came. Woohoo! And you're gonna make masks. Oh, and with one of these cutters, you can cut fabric for masks. You can make masks. All right, so now we have to keep going because look what I did. I made a huge mess. Orange rind or goo gone to take the sticky off. Um, the sticky off the. I'm not sure off this. Um, so I don't want to. I want to take this off carefully because I want to keep the sticky on here. Right? You want to keep that layer of sticky. So I'll remove all these, but I found if you take an X-Acto knife and you just get it under the corner here, you can just peel, peel, peel. And I was doing that in the house. It didn't take that long, but I did order four extra mats because I'm like, uh, I don't want to be waiting for my mat. Go to the next town over's post office so they don't know you. That's so funny. <laughs> Diana leading us astray, <laughs> encouraging us to go elsewhere. Um, I so want to pull this up, but we got to pay patience, patience, patience. The software is better on the Cameo. That's what I had heard. That's what I had heard. So you bought seven. Your favorites, the sweet little flowers drawn in rectangular patches. That is my pin flower pattern. I love that one. I actually made some more herb stakes with that the other day that are going to go in my garden if the snow stops. All right, do y'all want to, do you want to let this set? We should make, let's make another plate because this has to dry and I can't just sit here. All right, we're going to make another plate because I've got the plate making stuff out. <laughs> here it is, plate making stuff. So we'll make another one. Um, Let's see, what shape? The Jetsons. Let's do the Jetsons and let's make it fun since we have to wait anyhow. I'll pull you out, I'll pull you out. Okay. There we go. And now that I've got the underglaze crazy happening too, goodness. This is studio life though, right? You start one thing and then something else you get into and then the next thing you know, you've um, you know, just gone off on a tangent making all kinds of crazy stuff. I want this rim template right there. So I've got to get to it. It's the one on the bottom, right? Make an oval. I could make an oval. Um, I would have to go grab oval, but I really want a round plate. <laughs> 
but I want a round plate. Actually, a square plate would be, a square or rectangle would be so good with this pattern already because it has the square in it. So you are already like set up for success with a square or rectangle. And those are fun to make because you don't need a template for the rim. I would have to, all right, let's do, let's do a rectangle. Let me grab one of my rectangle. <laughs> yeah, you wanna grab me a rectangle or an oval? Uh, it doesn't matter. Just grab me one and we'll make it, and we'll make it happen, folks. I have got, I've got plates, I've got stuff everywhere. Just don't, don't bump my plate that I just finished. I better put it back. It's not too, too big because I don't have a, yeah, that's peachy. Kev's got one for us. We're gonna do a rectangle. Oh, let me start Instagram again. All the folks over on Instagram got cut off. All right, so I have this rectangle here. It's a five by 10 inch rectangle. And I think we're gonna use that to make, we're gonna use that to make something. And let me grab the folks on Instagram now because I lost them. I have to get them back. Well, I don't have to, but I will. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and make this one. I'm just gonna line it up here and do a rough cut. You just put your Mother's Day flowers in the sun. And a bee came to pollinate them, yay. So a square rectangle, yeah, we're gonna do this. We're gonna do this rectangle. So I'm just rough cutting, and then I will set this board off to the side. Mm, cut this one here, okay. So this is what we're gonna work with, this piece right here. I'm gonna set this clay over here. I got a piece of paper. How did that happen? Piece of paper. So I, I don't plan to bring my die cutter into the studio or, or do, you know, undo it from the mask in the studio. It's just today, just for today. Just a little bit. There, now you all can see it and I'll turn it sideways. Could I show the flower pattern? The one, the, um, the pin flower rolling pin. Yeah, the pin flower rolling pin, sure. This is my, my pin flower pattern. Um, let me see if I can get the focus to work on it so you can see. And I've done quite a few classes with this particular pin. Look how close we can go. Is that too close? There we go. Oh, no. Come on. There. So you can see each one is a little drawing that I did. And I put them inside little rectangles because I thought it was cute. And it is. It's really cute. And what I like about this pin is you can use it to make magnets or pendants or things like that. I also have one with little cactuses and that's my succulent pin. So those, those are the, the two I have. All right, so we're gonna use this rectangle. Let's see if my board should be long enough. I'm gonna transfer this slab of clay that I cut. So did you see I just cut it a little bit bigger? I, um, I didn't make it huge. Uh, maybe an inch and a half all the way around, maybe two inches. So I'm going to line this up where I want it to be. And now we're going to flip again. So people are always asking about getting it centered. I just put it where I want and then I flip it and it stays. So it's, it's kind of done. You don't have to shuffle it around or anything. So I've got it where I want and then flip the whole thing. Make sure your clay has released from your board and there you have it. So this is a drape mold technique, right, that we're gonna do. And I have got a yellow rib somewhere, but it's kind of walked off. So we're just gonna go ahead and use a red one, smoothing down the sides with the red rib. And then just get that smoothed out. So there's a trick here. So could these cast be made of plaster or won't they work? The, um, the molds, yeah, the forms, you can make them, yes. I got the Cameo 4, Dana, not the Plus. Um, it, 
So I got the four, not the plus, but I have to tell you if I fall in love with the four, I might have to get a plus. And I believe the four now has blades available for more than, more than paper, but please research and check because I don't want anybody getting something and finding out it wasn't what they want, right? That would be disappointing. So now I'm coming back towards the form, and this is the trick to get a really nice edge on these forms as you pull it backwards towards, pull it backwards towards you, just like this. And that really gives you a nice, so it looks like it's got a sheet over it, right? Like it's, like you've made the bed and it's really nice and hospital corners and everything. And then let me grab, this is how I do my edges. It's not really fancy. This is just a thickness strip that I have. It's about a half an inch thick and uh, I just put it up against my edge. And then we're just going to cut just like that straight edge cut. And if you want a thinner edge, you can use thinner strips. I have a thinner one. I'm not sure where it went to, but I do have thinner strips for thinner edges. So I have one that's a quarter of an inch. This one's the half. And then you just turn and cut. And so you don't really need to have a, a rim template for a square or a rectangle because you can use the straight edge like I'm using as your guide and you are getting a nice rim. And that's going to give a nice half inch rim sticking out. You got the brother because it cuts fabric up to three millimeter materials, Karen. Yeah, and um, I think that's what was the new thing with the Cameo 4 is that it'll let you cut more than thicker things, wood and, and other things. That was one of the new things that they came out with this year. And um, that's kind of why I was more interested in it than the two that I have now because it's old technology. You do not have to put a foot on this, but you know... I'm going to put a foot on it. You just know I am. And then I have all these little bits over here. So I'm going to cut my foot strips. So there's one. That's probably going to end up being one there. We need one more. They always look like ravioli. Yeah, ooh, ravioli sounds good. <laughs> the Jetsons was one of your favorite cartoons. Um, I know, I, I, that was a little before me as far as like a kid cartoon, but I still think the Jetsons are fun to watch. They were very funny, I thought as a kid. They were like silly, right? I liked Sailor Moon and um, uh, <laughs> and and others like that. <laughs> My Little Pony. So I'm slipping and scoring and putting a foot on. Don't have to add a foot if you don't want to, but I think this will be nice with this. And this could be the perfect size for a sushi tray. Is ClayShare.com not working? Um, it's the, it's the people have, it saved without the dub, ah. dub, dub. So www.ClayShare.com will get www you there. www.ClayShare.com will get you there. Now I just put in ClayShare. Uh, if, if it's they, saved, if they pass HTTPS ah. colon slash slash ClayShare.com, that one is still getting the network. So a lot of you um, know already that we did a major update to ClayShare, and we restructured a lot of things. So there's, it's so good now. You go to ClayShare.com, and it is full of your resources right there. You, we've got the forums on there now, which has the glaze recipes on it with the same page as the classes. All the classes are on ClayShare.com now. They're all there. They're not on TV. You can still go to TV. and get redirected, but we've changed it. And the resources still exist as a resource page, which is ClayShare resources. 
So a little bit of restructuring, and if you are on our email list, you would have gotten the email about that, explaining everything that was going on, and um, all the awesome changes coming to Klesha. You're starving, hence ravioli. <laughs> so I just cut the feet, and I oh, you know, did a little angle cut so they line up, and then just smooth your seams. And then just run your finger along that seam. Now, I like to use my little, little color shaper tool, but if you don't have one, what can I do with it? I can't find my little one, so we're going to be ridiculous with this one here. <laughs> it will work. It's gigantic. Um, but usually I have a small one, and I can't seem to find that right now. And who knows what I did with it. Just like everything, it all walks off. All right, and I'm gonna do one last check of my feet because I feel like this one's a little off. Where did I get my blue tool? I made that. You can make them. Now, GR Pottery Forms does sell a foot maker. You can buy one from them, or you can watch my free tutorial on how to make a foot maker. Yeah, that, that was way off. Do you see how far off that foot was? Way off, I had to trim that. So double check your, your rim to make sure the rim is the size you want it to be. You don't want uneven rims, right? Let's see, how's this? They're all a little uneven. Good for me, going back and checking. And then, ooh, I think we'll be able to remove the stencil off that slab I got drying down there. You love the new site, good, woohoo, good. I'm glad you love the new site, yeah, that, that was something that we'd been talking about doing and, um, you know, we knew it was going to be a little crazy when we did it for a day or two, but, well, it was only supposed to be crazy for a few hours, but, you know, how in the tech world a few hours turns into a day or two. Days. I know, but it's up and good now and it looks so good and it, it just makes more sense. So now this needs to, to sit. We really can't do anything with it until it's dried. I, it's early enough in my day that these can sit out and by this evening I'll be able to flip them out. And that's, that's, that's like the, the tray, it's done. Easy, right? Now, let's check our stencil. So this is a handmade die cut stencil that I did, Some, so let's, Let's see what we got. It's still a little juicy. It's a little juicy, but I think we'll be able to pull it. It might not be perfect, but we're gonna go ahead and do this. That I just purchased Cameo for and painting under glaze on a template. Was this made on my Cameo? It was, and I printed it on Tyvek paper. And the Tyvek paper can be used over and over. This is always the like magic reveal that you want to have the camera super close up so guess what? Come super close. <laughs> because you want to see this, right? You want to see how awesome this reveal is. All right, we're just going to pull. Oh, oh, it's a little thick. So wherever it's a little smooshy, it's because it's a little thick still. It could have sat and dried a bit longer. Ah, oh, the magic. Oh, it's so good. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, I'm happy, I'm a very happy girl right now. So the Tyvek paper here, you could put on a finished piece if you roll it on a leather hard piece, um, is what I mean, not finished, a, a made piece. You could put it on a leather hard piece and use it just like I just did. You just have to be able to press it in with a roller. Now, you'll wanna lay this flat on a board and then sponge it clean. And then you can use it over and 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 over. And there's the pattern that pattern. I'm gonna bring it up close. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? And although it looked super messy when I was doing it, <laughs> you can see it now. It looks great. So what you need to do to use this now, let me get the focus set, um, is you let this set up until it's not sticky anymore, so it's not tacky. And that will take, oh, I don't know, 20, 30 minutes. And as soon as it's not tacky anymore, I can then use it on a GR pottery form. I can cut this out and make a mug with it if it was a longer piece of clay. You know, this is a little short. 
and this was just those three colors and you see how we have an ombre stripey effect going on how fun right to have sitting on a beach under an umbrella april exactly what i'm thinking this is like summertime dinner wear right here out in my gazebo having a nice glass of iced tea and eating off of this little plate so i'm gonna since this is a square i'm gonna let it dry and i'll make a square plate from using the gr pottery forms now i'll just find one that that fits this size here and i'll make a big big plate <laughs> all right so there we go that's all i got that's all i have to share with everybody um just a just a just was going to be quick, but you know, look what happened. The blue and green together, I know. They're my favorite colors. Well, I also like coral and oranges too, but I love this. Oh, look how good that is. Could you put the die cut on another slab and get the reverse effect? Yes. Yes, you can. So we could take this juiciness. Oh, wait, do you want to do that? What? We could do that. Hold on. Hold on. Let me set this to the side. Oh, we're going to go back to the top then. Yeah, we're going to, let me grab another slab of clay. This is, this is what happens. <laughs> yeah, you know, you know me. This is life. Just when you think you're done, another thing happens. This is studio though, and it's not a bad thing. It actually is very exciting. Yeah, you can use the reverse and get a little more of that off. So here's the one with the lollipopkins design on the back. I'm not making a plate with that now because guess what? Bye. It's all right. I'm sorry that they're going. I mean, you could leave the texture on the back if you wanted to. But we'll make plates with that. I'll make some stuff with that and post it online. But right now, we're going to do this. Okay. Smooth. Y'all ready? This could get out of hand. I just want y'all to know. So we've got me off camera <laughs> let me zoom out a little i want everybody to see i've got the reverse side ready you're going to put this down and it's a one and done you can't wiggle it around put lining it up line it up line it up and then drop it drop it like it's hot baby there we go and then oh no i messed it all up maybe <laughs> no, I didn't. Okay, we're doing it this way. Press and roll. And then I'm making a terrible mess, but we're going to clean it all up just a second. Because I have a feeling this, oh, it's such a mess on my roller. Um, we can use a damp cloth, damp squeezed out. Hold on. Get your sponge damp, squeeze it out really well and then just wipe back what you don't want. And that hopefully will work. We're gonna peel it up right in a second, so we're gonna see if this does it. I don't know. But wait, there's more. This is, to, this is like on days I'm not filming a class and I'm just out here coming up with ideas for, for new classes and I'm doing like research and development. This is how it is. It's like mad scientist time. Stuff goes everywhere. The studio gets trashed. And it looks like a hurricane came through. And that usually happens like once every two to three weeks, I'll have a couple days in a row like that. And it, it just is where all the new classes come from and new ideas because I just spend a chunk of time making and exploring and playing with things. So we're just gonna clean off the underglaze we didn't want. This won't be as precise as the other way, but still could be pretty good. All right, and then you'll definitely wanna scrub your pony roller off <laughs> because you don't wanna use that and then roll this color right back in. So I think we're gonna peel this up now. I think we're ready to go. You could even use a blotting paper maybe, I don't know, on top of this and see if that would work. But and, and then if that someone like now put another color in. You could put another color in. Ah, so, so I would do white probably. I think I'd do white. But here's the thing. 
Then we have to wait for it to dry. Um, white. I'm thinking white. <laughs> white. All right. Yes. Then put another color in, cause but wait, there's more. <laughs> so now we could have uh, the color, you know, the blues, and then we can put the white on top. Let me get a new brush. <laughs> this is what happens. See what you all make me do? <laughs> I'm not complaining. Oh, the new speedball underglazes are gonna have wider tops. Um, speedball, I love you. I love your underglazes. I hate how tiny the tops are. So I'm gonna switch to an Amico. Um, where did I put all those Amico underglazes? I've got, I've got some. Let's see if I get a white in these boxes. Got some Amico underglazes in here. I don't know what colors I got. Blues. These are all blues. Blues and purples. I organized my Amico underglazes. Coral. Hmm. Who's that test plate? This is why we have a test plate. So, here is my Amico test plate. This is the coral. Here are the colors I just used from Speedball. So, I used aqua, turquoise, and medium blue. These are the three colors I just used. And now if I wanted to throw some coral in, hmm, I don't know. I think an orange would be, hmm, I don't know. What do you all think? Or a yellow? What about yellow? Half and half. Sponge the white on. Ah, sponge it on instead of, instead of brushing. I could, we could sponge it on. I've got a foam spongy brush. Let me get a foam, let me get a spongy brush. See, not only do I teach you all, you teach me. It works both ways, right? Now I've got to figure out where I put that. Mm. I think the peach could work nice. So I could use the Amico or I could use melon. Oh, I think I'm going to have to go with melon. The Speedball Melon is one of my favorite colors. I'm going to go with that because I love it. That's the pink. Hold on, I'm down here digging out all my underglaze colors. Here is the melon. All right, here's the melon. Could you use a hair dryer for drying your underglaze quicker? Sure. You coral. Just went crazy with people shouting colors. Ah, yellow and coral. Coral, coral. I can't find my box of the coral. I don't know where I put the other Amico um, underglazes. That's the problem. I have like them somewhere around the studio. I moved stuff about and I have white. I can find white, but I can't find the coral. Where did I put those, Kev? <laughs> oh wait, what's in this? Ha! Nope, those are Mako. That's not going to help me. <sighs> Anyhow, I think we're going with melon. Purple. Purple would be good too. So I need a container because I want to use this one. Mm. My little plastic small containers. Kevin's going to grab me a container for this. Melon would be good. And we're going to, this is what happens when you organize, right? You can't find things anymore. <laughs> yellow, 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 yellow. I think the sponge, two to three colors. Well, I have underneath already three colors. I think if I put too many colors in, it'll get uh, muddy. It'll be hard to see. You want a solid color for the background. So this is the melon and um, blop it on. But this means we're gonna have to wait for it to dry. Hmm. I don't know. I think I like a sponge better than that sponge brush, the foam brush. And then we're gonna end up with underglaze on this side and then we could flip that onto something else and use that again as a source for getting our pattern and color right <laughs> so you see how it never ends and we could just keep going on and on and on this would be a good way to apply your color the first time too you could sponge it on
and this will be a really subtle peachy color which I think will work well white um, we could put a layer of white I might put a layer of white on top of the peach mm, no I'm gonna leave the peach this isn't an underglaze transfer if it was it would be we could do that but I know white would have been nice to tap it all on things get crazy when I do workshops too you think uh, teaching teaching classes my clay share classes are very organized and you know I have one objective I'm teaching you this one thing how to make right so I can stay on track but as most artists do we, we kind of get off on tangents and when we're making our brains just start to go in so many different directions and you can't wait to try all kinds of things. And when I do workshops, I have a hard time reining it in. And what happens is we make the thing we plan to make, and then we make a whole mess of other things because that's how it is. So I always have a plan of what I will make, and we make those things, and then, you know, we leave there with like 10 other projects that weren't intended, but they just sort of happened. The glaze that never ends. Right, this is the class that never ends. tamping this on tap 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 a tap a tap -a. so now this has to dry too <laughs> see we're back to where we started we were waiting for the other one to dry this was supposed to be a quick unboxing <laughs> this was going to be like a quick um quick quick little video like oh look at the rolling pins i have and now what happened which after i finish this i will photograph that b pin and get sharon the info uh, all right. <laughs> today's class has been a little crazy and it's Mother's Day and I'm doing what I want today and I'm not cooking dinner just put it out there <laughs> should we peel it up what do you guys think mm, I think I'm gonna peel it up oh oh it's sort of a train wreck but maybe in a good way I have no idea ready here it is I'm peeling I'm peeling it's going Oh, it's faded. It's like, oh, it's like faded pattern on stucco. Look at that. Oh, I got to put this somewhere. <laughs> Look at what we got. So it looks like an old stucco, like a building pattern. Like you would see, let me see if I can get that to be sharp. Look at that. Crazy. So this is the one that was the, the negative, the leftover bit that we put the peach on after we pressed it in. Right, so there's that one. And let me grab, let me grab down here. This was the original one. So this is the perfect, pristine, super nice, yummy, not distressed looking. So this is the um, ultra new, and this is like the distressed look. So we have two <laughs> weathered, right? You feel like you're walking down Miami in the 60s. Exactly. <laughs> Lenise is like, yeah, white would have been better. I, you might be right. But you know what? This was all fun. So it doesn't matter. It's all testing things out and having a good time. You know, this is going to be a white background because this is B-Mix. So I will have a white and blue. This is going to be perfect. And it's going to look totally different than this one right here. And we really won't know what it will look like until it comes out of the kiln. So who knows, right? Who knows what it's going to look like? We don't. We're just going to have to wait and see. But I'll make two plates with these, and I will share them when they're done. It'll probably be a couple weeks, you know, because it takes a little time for stuff to dry. I know, now I can use the die cut again. It just doesn't end, does it? So you can just keep going on and on and on and on and on. And that's kind of like life in the studio, you know? Uh, you keep making and making and it just doesn't end. You, you might think when you start that you'll get bored with pottery and you'll get sick of making things, but, but you won't. I promise. I've been doing it for over 20 years. I am not bored yet. I'm trying to get bored. It's just not working. <laughs> That's sort of how it is. <laughs> you know, you make one thing. And it leads to the next thing and then it leads to the next and the next and the next so it's just 
it's just how it is, right? You just keep going with it and you find things you really like and you just expand upon that. And if you get bored with the thing you're doing with pottery, there are so many things out there, you can find something else. So if something's not working for you, if you're making pottery and it's just not working, I guarantee you just gotta find something different, whether it's the way you're making, whether it's the patterns you're using, the techniques, but just keep at it. You know, there's sculpting and you can coil sculpt, you can sculpt with pinch pots, you can sculpt with slabs. There's hand building with slabs. There's like we're making functional pottery. There's wheel throwing, there's throwing and then you can alter parts. There's throwing with coils. So many things you can do that it's endless and that's just with those you could slip cast and then add forms and that's just the making so can i reuse the clay with the underglaze on it so what you can do when you have clay scraps that have underglaze on it is you can wedge them up and that color will tint the clay a bit and so now you have tinted clay and what i do is i'll have little sealed up bags for color families so like a blue green color could be in one bag and then you can keep adding more to it of the same tone if you have just a couple little, like if you have two little pieces like this, you're not gonna save that, that's just silly. But um, if you have a bunch of it, save it. Although this, you could make a pendant out of, so yeah, you save it. <laughs> you do it right now and you make a quick little, roll it up, make a quick little colored pendant, right? So you've got colored clay that way. All right, and then you run out of room for stuff. That's the story of my life right now. <laughs> All right, so that's all I got today, everybody. There will be a kiln opening next Sunday, a week from today, there'll be a kiln opening. Um, I got my cameo from silhouetteamerica.com directly from Silhouette. And remember, they are doing a sale through the 12th with the code Mother's Day. I have no affiliation with Silhouette at all. I get nothing from telling you about it. It's just the best deal I found on a die cutter that's affordable. Now, there are other ones that are really nice and I looked at them I just can't the price wise I just for me I couldn't go anymore that was it that was where my cutoff was and I, I wasn't going to spend more money but um you know if you find one you really love get the one that you're leaning towards they all are pretty similar and I have found through my research and don't be like me and put it off figuring it out just sit down with your instruction booklet watch some tutorials YouTube's got a ton Skillshare, uh, Skillshare has some that's another website I'll also Silhouette has their own too in their blog. All right, everybody. Um, so do I have the pottery form that has curves within the shape? Uh, you mean the platforms? Yes, I do. And I've, I've made those on a broadcast. Go back to last October and there are live broadcasts where I've made that using their platforms. But I will do some more with those. I use the platforms a lot. They're really pretty. Um, I had a plate, where did I put it? I don't have it available right now, but yeah, they're, they're great forms. So you got a silhouette, Karen. I think you will love it. I think you will. Um, I will share all that I know about the silhouette as I learn it with you guys. All right, everyone, happy Mother's Day. Take care. Thank you so much for hanging out here with me on your Sunday. I'm gonna go take, I'm gonna clean this up and then take the rest of the day off. That's it, it's Mother's Day. I'm out. Bye, everyone.